All right, it's been it's rumors out there. I like article in the description. A lot of strong rumors that um, you know most people in, inside the NFL, my like Ann Rappaport from NFL uh, Network, reported that the Lions are probably going to trade back for the number three pick. So we're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about who uh, the Lions should take if they stay at three and should they move back. So I'm um, probably going to do a lengthy video. Appreciate everybody for checking in. Hit that subscribe button, bell icon button. Once again, don't forget me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, all those links in the description if you need to reach out to me. Questions, inquiry, sponsorship, video requests, whatever the situations is. And also, uh, check out our podcast on Anchor. Um, it got we on Spotify, Google Podcasts, the whole nine. So I did a couple of Lions episodes. I got to do this Piston episode. I just had some issues uploading it. So um, that link will be in the description of the podcast link. So if you need to reach out to me, that's there. Don't forget to check my other channel out, Goodfellas Sports TV. Um, I got that channel back as well, too. So let's talk about uh, uh, the Lions trading back uh, from three. Um, obviously, somebody going to want to reach for a quarterback, especially if Washington doesn't take a quarterback. So three is going to be a hot spot where they can move back. It's been scenarios where people talking about the Lions should trade back um, twice. Um, you know, me personally, I'm just tired of the beta mill mentality that Bob Quinn got in the draft. He always moving back, bro, or he doing stupid shit and taking tight ends at seven, uh, which I don't knock Hawkinson as a player. I just don't like the idea of taking a tight end at, a, at seven. Um, I think you stay there and you take the best available player. Um, that's what I believe. You know, trading down, getting multiple picks, you get multiple picks. And by doing that, all you're doing is giving Bob Quinn a bigger opportunity to, to, to mess up and, and swing and miss on picks. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we know he want to trade back and draft Jeff Okuda, and I'll get to that in a minute. I think you stay at three. It's a guy there that I like a lot, but I'm not opposed to moving back. I'd rather him trade back from three than take Jeff Okuda at three. You know, people are so enamored with the cornerback position. The cornerback position, it ain't even a, it ain't even a top three important position on the defense, in my opinion. You know, people don't understand that, that you build a team from the front to the back end. A cornerback is only as, it's a dependent position, just like the tight end position is. It's only as good at his, as his front seven and the motherfuckers behind him, which is his safeties. You know, you can take a corner out the game. I can throw away from Okuda. He, he can take away one side of the field. You know what I'm saying? But I can target Coleman. I can, tighter, I can target the linebackers. I can target the other corner, whoever it's going to be, Mike Ford, Desmond Trufant, um, Armani Iwaku. I can cook their ass all day. And remember, he a rookie. Patrick Peterson was a hell of a cornerback prospect. He got cooked a lot of the times. So if for a team that's in a win-now situation, you know, I just think you take the best player available at three that you think. If you don't want to take a quarterback, it's a lot of guys there to take at three. But trading back, I get it. You know, you can get an offensive lineman. You can get, you know, Kuda. You can get somebody else to D-tackle out of South Carolina I like a lot. I mean, you can get a number of picks. But once again, you know, you you missing out on why you number three. You get the it's life-changing, upon, it's life-changing players at three. Down there. It's really, it's, it's really like Bob Quinn can miss, bro. I feel that he missed on Hawkinson last year, man, when he could have took Devin Bush and upgraded, but Devin Bush, he wasn't big enough. Nobody's trying to hear that. The NFL is going in a whole different direction. Big, slow linebackers, this ain't the 80s or the 90s or the early 2000s. You got to have linebackers that keep up with Lamar, that keep up with Watson, that keep up with Wilson. The Lions ain't got other than Jamie Collins and and Jerry Davis, they don't have no athletes up front that can spy a quarterback. You don't spy your safety, really, unless you put them at the joker position or the hybrid linebacker safety position. So they don't have no athleticism other than those two up front. And, you know, that's sad, man. But, you know, if they do move back, I get it. That's what Bob Quinn do. He has a beta male mentality when it comes to the draft. He always moved back, get all these other picks and who to who. You know, you get hand. He's a good player, but he always injured. You know, who, who, what pro bowler, perennial pro bowler, has he drafted? Galladay got in because some players didn't want because some players fell out because of injury or the Super Bowl. No offense to him. Matthew Stafford, you know, he didn't draft him, but he ain't going to the pro bowl every year. 
You know, who is he drafting? That's a superstar. We have no superstars. They got rid of Indomitian. You know, Calvin retired. Who are you laying your hat on that you going to see play for the Lions? No fucking body. Matthew Stafford, you know, he people love him around the city, but he ain't no superstar for real. He underrated, you know, just because he getting hurt by the organization and some of the dumb decisions Martha Bob and Patricia is making. But who you going down there to see like Megatron and Barry? They don't have that guy no more. Bob Quinn been here, what, four years now, three years now? He hasn't drafted one fucking superstar. He hasn't brought one in. Nobody wearing no Flowers jersey, no Coleman jerseys, you know, Jamie Collins jerseys. Nobody wearing those. Nobody's wearing them fucking things in New England. They don't have a TB12. You know what I'm saying? They don't have a Stephon Gilmore. Now that they got rid of Darius Slay. And Darius Slay, you know, people don't come to see cornerbacks play. It's another thing about it. Unless you like Deion Sanders, they ain't coming to see no cornerback play. The Lions need a player that's going to put some asses in the seats. And they should take a quarterback. And I've been saying that. Somebody that's going to change the organization. There's no running back that high to take like Zeke or Gurley or or or, or, or Leonard Fournette or Christian McCaffrey in that 1 or 10, 1 to 5, 1 to 10 range. That, that ain't there. People pay to see Christian McCaffrey, pay to see Cam Newton when he was in Tampa. You know, they pay to see Tom Brady. The Lions don't have a player that people pay to see. And Bob Quinn and Martha and them, they stripped the team of a lot of talent. So you get in a position to get a Chase Young. You know what? With all the extra picks, you know, maybe they should move up and take Chase Young. Get a, you know, opportunity. I want to say it. Get an opportunity to take Isaiah Simmons. You know? They need somebody that, that's going to give an endemic and sue a Calvin Johnson impact at that point. You know, you bring two in, you know what the buzz is going to be like. Around Detroit, they need that 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 type of that captivating player, and the Lions don't have any captivating players because they they got rid of all of them. They get rid. This team is as vanilla as I've seen in a long time. You know, they got rid of him. Kenny Galladay is kind of growing into that, but he ain't there yet. Who are you really going down there to see play? Carry on. He can't stay healthy. Hawkinson, he's still going. It's probably going to be two or three years before. He becomes something like Kittles or Kelsey or something like that. You know, do you really going to see Stafford like that? I don't know. So that's why the point you at number three to take a captivating player. A player that's gonna, gonna rack in some tickets. You bring Chase Young here, the buzz is gonna be buzzing. You bring Tua here, the buzz is gonna be is gonna be buzzing. You know? So that's the things you got to kind of look at. You know, when you win the top three, you move back and you you just getting players. And, and the team, that team uh, uh, philosophy that they got from New England, it ain't working. It worked because Tom Brady was so polarizing. He was captivating. People had to see Tom Terrific, Tom Brady. He was it. You don't have that player on Detroit. That's that's going to upgrade or elevate players' levels around him. Stafford ain't elevating nobody around him, and that's no disrespect to him. You know what I'm saying? Stafford ain't going to make you a, a better receiver. You're going to get opportunities because they throw the ball a lot, but he ain't going to win no games and get you a bigger contract really nowhere else like that. So, you know, Tom Brady and Bill Belichick are the main, they're the only ingredients in a Patriot way. You know, they trying to bring that team mentality here without time, without the brain of Bill Belichick. It's not going to work. So, you know, as far as my opinion on them moving down, I get it, but I wouldn't do it. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't move down. I'm at three. I'm going to stand at three. I'm going to take the best player available. I'm going to try to get the hottest thing smoking there at three. If Chase Young fall to three, there's no way I'll I, I trade back. If I was running the show, I would take two of them. Let them sit a year, and if we it get bad down the stretch, you know, down, you know, we in week eight, nine, ten, and we eliminated, then I let them play. People saying that Will Tua is going to be a, um, he's going to be injury prone. This ain't college football, the SEC, NFL football, soft as hell. You know what I'm saying? You you got a, they got a strike zone where you only can hit them at, so he'll be all right in the NFL. He ain't gonna take a lot of big hits, but I get it. But I know that won't happen, so that's not going to be my suggested move. I know it's not going to happen. Uh, they're going to wait till Matthew Stafford arm and legs fall off and they're going to wait till they're in a situation where, you know, he totally gone off the picture. They're going to, 
they're going to ride him so they can't ride his ass no more. All right. But as far as what I would do, uh, as far as with the draft pick, I would stay at three and I would pull the trigger on Chase Young or Dig Brown. I said it the other day. Those are the guys that I'm looking at. Um, you, Derek Brown is, is a total animal in the interior. Could you move back and still get the kid from South Carolina and get Okuda? Maybe you might have to move up again with that second. If you get another first round pick and move up and get the kid from South Carolina. But, you know, no way in hell I'm taking no Jeff Okuda at three. Um, if I do take him, it'll be moved back and I have to get an interior lineman um, of the South Carolina's caliber, you know, or a pass rusher that's, that's comparable to um, Chase Young or something like that nature. You don't build a defense from the DBs on back. And Bill Belichick going to find out the hard way. You know, they talking about trading Stephon Gilmore, and I'll maybe talk about that in another video. Um, but he's going to learn the hard way that you can't have slow guys, up, all slow guys in your front seven no more. You can't have big slow linebackers because they got tore by every athletic quarterback last year they played. Watson, Mahomes, Lamar, even Tannehill. You know, tow their ass up, you know, in his own special way in the playoffs. The NFL is going into a different, a different, a different swag, man. Look at all the just all the mobile quarterbacks that surround us. Um uh, uh Matthews, I mean uh excuse me, Aaron Rodgers, Trubisky bum ass can be mobile. You look down in the in the AFC, in the NFC South, you're looking at uh well Cam is gone, so it's a wrap for Cam. Um Um, you know, Taysom Hill may take over. You know, um you look down there. And in, in, in NFC East, Daniel Jones can move a little bit. We've seen Dak can move, Carson can move. You know what I'm saying? You look in the you look in the AFC NFC uh West. You're looking at Kyler Murray can run. We've seen that last year. Um, Russell Wilson can move. So you the, the half the league becoming quarterbacks that are have the capability of be, being mobile, and you got to account for that level of man. And when your linebacker slow. And, you, and they built the thump and they built to the go downhill. They're not built to go sideline to sideline. They're going to get smoked every time. So you have to be able to change your philosophy defensively. You have to get those speed guys up, up front, the Devin Bushes of the world. The, you know, you got to find the guys that can run in be that's big, like Patrick Willis, and that can be strong at the point of attack. You got to find Luke Keekley's and shout out to him who had a great career. He retired. You got to find those athletic guys, man. At the second level, man, you gotta have some athleticism up front, you know. But I'm I'm looking at Young and Brown. I just don't. I, those are two guys. I like Isaiah Simmons, but I just don't think the Lions can. They not gonna know what to do with him. But those are two guys I'm looking at um, to rush the passer. That's how you build the defense. You build it from the front to the back end. It's depth at cornerback all through the draft. It's depth at receiver all through the draft. It's some depth at safety through the draft. You got Antoine Winfield's son. You got Dale Pitt from LSU. You got a few guys. It's depth, 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 depth through the draft at most positions. You know what I'm saying? So how do you build? Uh, how do you? Uh, how you make your second level your linebackers better? Your third level your DBs better? You do it with a good pass rusher up front. So if they able to plug in Derrick Brown and then or Chase Young or they can get Derrick Brown and then sign Jadavion Conley. You upgrade it, but you still have to have a second layer of guys. You got Danny Sheldon that should back up. You got to find another D tackle. You got the kid from Clemson. You got to find another respectable pass rusher to back them up because you got to have two waves of D linemen. You got to have a starting four for a starting four, and that's what they're gonna have to do. You know, I'm not worried. People talking about, oh, we gonna take Jeff Okuda. Why the Why the hell would you take a cornerback when your defensive line is pathetic? Just think about that for a minute. You had the least amount of sacks. If Darius Slade wasn't a, a good cornerback, if you put Desmond Trufant at quarterback last year with the Lions, dude, he wouldn't even grade on pro football focus. People say, well, he graded higher than Darius Slade. I don't even take pro football, pro football focus serious. Because if you watch the games, the nine games that Desmond Trufant played last year, he horrible. He gave up 15.5 yards a catch, man, I believe it was. Holding pass interference. But they're going to learn it. They're going to learn today. They're going to learn when he get in there. You say you tell him to do what Darius Slade did was play 90-something percent man, whatever it was last year. Go get smoked with that D-line. At least he had Vic Beasley and, and, and Tack McKinley and guys that could rush the quarterback that was stressed. In, in, in Detroit, you don't have none of that. You know? So you, you can't put Okuda out there and tell him to start day one with that front seven. You just can't do it. 
Now, if you add a clowny and add a cooter, add the dude from South Carolina, you move back. Yes, I, I, I can see it. I can see it working. But I'm I'm three. I'm Chase Young and Derrick Brown, bro. We that defensive tackle position is naked. Is naked. Who else you got out there? Danny Sheldon, he ain't no starter. No. Deshaun he ain't, he always injured. So you solidify with Derrick Brown in the middle or Chase Young there, you solidify it on the edge with Chase Young. So you get a you get Trey Flowers a book in. But you know, I more likely their skin's gonna take Chase Young. You plug Derrick Brown in there, you don't look back. You got a ton of picks for in the middle rounds. You fill out your team, your offensive line there. I'm taking Derrick Brown and I'm not looking back. Because you have to have a D-line. The the cornerback position is just the too dependent. It's like taking a fucking tight end at seven. I don't understand why people don't understand that. A cornerback is not going to change life for the Detroit Lions. It's just not. Not as a rookie. It's not. You're not going to win nothing with a cor- getting a cornerback. We can take away the team's best receiver. Now they got five or six best receivers. You got t- tight ends. You got guys like David Johnson out the backfield, Saquon out the backfield. You got you got you know uh, slot receivers like Edelman and, and and you know all these dudes out here. He can't cover everybody. And if your linebackers can't cover, you know they gonna get shredded. Coleman got shredded last year without a good defensive line. Whoever you know, True Font gonna get shredded if your tight ends. I mean, if your safeties, you know, in coverage and man coverage, they gonna get shredded. So that's two. De- that's a dependent position. Derrick Brown makes an impact instantly. The quickest way to the quarterback is in a straight line. If he if he is what we think he is, what they say he is, and he able to provide that sauce up the middle of the field, that's gonna make everybody in the back end better. Trust your drafting. Trust Armani and Rocky to come in there and, 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 and cover. And be good and develop. But no, no, you don't take Jeff Okuda at three. I don't take him at all. I just don't. I don't get the fascination with a corner. Everybody that know football around the league know, no. Not not in this situation. If your D-line was better, your linebackers was better, you know, then I say, well, I get it. But they're not. They're not, they not good enough to front seven. Your front seven right now, Probably start a Danny Shelton, uh, Deshaun Hand, uh, Trey Flowers, Jamie Collins, Jared Davis, or Mike Tav- or Talani, Christian Christian Jones, and whoever else they want to throw the hell out there. You know what I'm saying? That's not good enough, bro. That's gonna be that's going to be one of the second worst sack team again. They might upgrade to the third or fourth uh lead, uh, uh worst sack team in the league. Yeah, you know, I'm just keeping it 100 on that, man. But Derrick Brown or Chase Young, my pick. Chase, Chase Young or Derrick Brown, my pick. I'm sticking with it. I'm not taking no Akuda. It's not Madden. A cornerback is not that important in this league where it's a, it takes precedent over a pass rusher. The way it goes is this. When you build your team, other than building it through the trenches, you say, I want a quarterback. I want a, 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 part, a guy that can protect the quarterback and a guy that can get after the quarterback. That's pretty much the importance, the three most important positions to start your team with for the most part quarterback protect the quarterback and somebody that can get after the quarterback and disrupt his, the other quarterback's rhythm so that's the way it go but i'm not taking no Akuda. that's the dumbest shit they can do on life at three and even moving down if you don't get an extra first round pick this year i think it's just stupid because you got a, the d-line is just so fragile and weak and last year it was weak before and after mike daniels got drafted but hey it's motor city sports talk let me know what you guys think once again uh, don't forget to check out the podcast. I'll link that in the description. When I drop that Piston episode, I put in the community tab and I put it on social media. Social media in the description, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You want to make a donation, cash out PayPal in the description. Uh, shout out to everybody that's, that supported me through all this stuff, man. Got the channel back. It was hacked. Want to make it, uh, uh, want to follow my other channel, Goodfellas Sports TV. Uh, we talk a lot of stuff over there. One time for the one time we gone.